Hey there, it's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. (laughs) By now you're used to that, right? Oh, I'm so excited today because today you get to meet Matthew Dennis Lewis. He's a New York native and he is best known for his role in The Queen's Gambit. I know you have to have seen that on Netflix. It was so good. Also, you know him from the Emmy Award winning series, Godless. He played Charlie in that. He is an amazing talent. We actually, at the time of this recording, we share a manager, which is how I first met Matthew here in these LA Hollywood streets. And he's so kind, his heart is so warm. And, you know, we started just connecting even on Instagram and just commenting on each other's posts. And, you know, you sometimes you just see, you just see good people, you see good energy. That's Matthew Dennis Lewis. So buckle up, get some popcorn, get your snack and enjoy this interview with Matthew Dennis Lewis. Matthew, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Christine. Oh, I'm so happy. And but I know for those of you, you know, you just tuned in, but Matthew has a cat that's trying to steal the show, <laughs> steal the spotlight. So if there's a if if there's an entrance, don't be shy. <laughs> right. He may walk through, he may just close the computer. Who knows? <laughs> oh my gosh, Matthew, I'm so happy you're here. I mean, you have been doing some lovely work. We we are with the same management. Yes. That's how we met some years ago at some events, I think, mm-hmm. back in the day, back, you know, when we would go to events in person. Remember those? I always get excited when I'd see you. I'd be like, okay, somebody I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been done, you've done some great work. You know, you've been on Godless. Most recently, you know, the world saw, saw you in the Queen's Gambit. But I want to know, let's take me back, you know? And honestly, I haven't had a chance to talk to you this deeply. Where are you from? How did you even get started in acting and entertainment? Yeah, I'm from originally New York. Uh, my brother and I, who people have seen me with on TV, <laughs> yeah. Russell, um, we both come from upstate New York, um, oh. small town, very small town in rural New York. Uh, and then we made the move to New York City and then stay there for a few years and then moved out here. But um, growing up, we didn't really get many chances to get into acting, you know, besides like the one school play a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think a lot of the creativity came from just growing up. There's four boys, you know, we were in the middle. So we had a younger and an older brother. And I think the creativity came from, you know, being outside, you know, at all hours of the day, making our own stories, like creating our own adventures, you know, using our imagination. Um, so I think that's where a lot of that creativity started. And then when we were old enough to make that choice, you know, to move to New York City for the opportunity, I think it was kind of just a natural calling. Uh, We never really discussed it with each other. You know, Russ had suddenly decided he wanted to go to an acting conservatory in New York um, that he went to. And then, you know, that kind of bled onto me. And then I got interested and then I went. Mm -hmm. That was the catalyst for what got us started. I love it. So you, you'd have these adventures just in, in your town, do a school play every now and then. Who, who, when you were watching like television movies, like what were the, did you, was this, was it any to like lean in? Were you really drawn to it or was it just like, oh, that's, that's cool. And we just go out and still just, just having fun playing with your brothers. Like, what was that like? Were you like, cause I, when I was little, I would, oh, I just, I would do my own shows in my house and I was just extra and I loved watching <laughs> and taking it all in. So what was that like for you? Did you experience that? Yeah. I mean, we definitely, there was, and I'll say a couple because there was only a couple of shows that we really liked to watch and enjoy because where we grew up, you know, we didn't have cable, we didn't have satellite. So mm-hmm. we literally had like, if there was good weather, like two or three channels. Right. <laughs> you know, because if it was windy or storming, you had to go like turn the antenna to try and- Right, the ra- rabbit ears, right? Yeah, like, like a station. So um, we grew up, which is basically like Fox and CBS. So mm-hmm. like one of our favorite shows, uh, which everyone always picks fun of us on, is like Xena Warrior Princess, you know? <laughs> but it was like the hit show, right. you know, a generation. Um, but that, you know, that played right into it because that was adventure, that was exciting. She was mm-hmm. a strong, you know, female presence um, that changed a lot of characters for TV, I believe. Yeah, I love that. So you both go to the conservatory, you end up in New York. Oh, I didn't go to the conservatory, just he did. 
Okay, he went yeah. to the group. Yeah. But then it's but you had a spark to so you like, wait, I like I think I like acting too. Mm-hmm. Right. So then you end up moving to New York. Like, what did you think your goal was? What did you know? We have I for instance, like when I moved to LA the first time, it's like, hey, I'm here, Hollywood. I'm gonna <laughs> get discovered today, right? What was your your goal at the time? What did you think was gonna happen for you when you moved to New York City? Well, my goal at the time wasn't, you know, fully acting. Um, I was very much into fitness at that age and I wanted to do like fitness modeling. I wanted to be like in the fitness magazines. I wanted to do that. Um, and I did start to venture off into that, but, um, I actually found myself having, you know, bad experiences with agencies and stuff that, you know, are no longer around for good reason, but, um, you know, it kind of deterred me from it, you know, and I kind of lost the spark um and that's when i actually completely took myself in a different direction and i became a muay thai kickboxer <laughs> uh, Come on, are you serious yeah. and i started and i started competing and training and you know became my passion for many years you know i loved that but then there came a time um when a show came out on stars called spartacus mm-hmm. um and that i fell in love with the series but mostly because of the acting but also the fighting and yeah. the photography and the scenes and I was like this is what I want to do and like with now my background in fighting I was like there's no reason why I can't do this right um, and that was my deciding factor um between moving to California or staying in New York because at this point Russ had already moved to California he was oh. a year before me okay and I was at the point where I was like okay do I go professional with my fighting career you know and make that the sole journey or do I pursue what I actually moved here to do and make the big leap, you know, to California. Cause at that point, that's where a lot of the opportunity was because in New York, it was like high fashion theater, stuff like that. But you know, that, right. that wasn't my passion. I wanted to do TV film. And so that was the deciding factor. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. I'll pick everything up. I came out for a pilot season and then I never went back. <laughs> wow. I <laughs> love it. New York. So. I love it. And you're like, how can I blend the two worlds? So did that end up how was that when you first got out here? Were you able to do some projects that were able to u- utilize both of your gifts? Yeah, almost all of my beginning projects had fight scenes in them. So it, it really did help and, you know, it was a blessing, you know, that I had that background. So yeah, really helped those of you listening, watching, right? It's, 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 special it's, skills it's, actually matter. Right. <laughs> you can because the people want people who are who it looks real like of course there are projects that will train you but there's a difference between when it's in when it's just in you and it's something you've trained for years we can tell the difference and then you can act on top of that so as you've gotten older right and then you started okay you still have the love for pat for 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 acting and for being athletic as you started watching i'm always i'm so drawn to what draws people to people and I love being the fly on the wall, but like, what, what is it that pulls you? So as you watch like things like Spartacus and some other shows, what kind of actors or what kind of performances are the ones that make you lean in? Um, definitely the more like grounded, guttural, like real ones. Like um, not to say that, you know, one thing is more real than the other, but you know, I, and the thing about Spartacus that was, something that really drew me in was not only was it the like fighting and the fight choreography and that drama, but it was also very like political on like the high Roman side, like the way that they like backstab each other and like plot and twists. And like, it was always an adventure to follow. And, you know, I like stuff like that. Like I love, I mean, I would sit down any day and watch some slaps of comedy, just, you know, ease myself and laugh, but I really like things that make you think and have to like figure it out as you go. Yeah, like almost who done it, <laughs> yeah. right? You get to be the, your own detective on your own end. Yeah. <laughs> um, how have you found? You know, you're. Oh, for those of you who don't know, Matthew. Matthew has a twin who he's talking about. Um, and um, how how do you two navigate? And how have you both? navigated the industry for yourselves um especially once you have worked together on screen together how does that affect how you're presented into the world and being pitched for jobs is that a thing with with, have you found that the industry does see you separately because you go off for different things or since queen's gambit has that effect impacted that at all um i do really think it's a mixed bag um but we we try to protect ourselves from being lumped 
completely together. Like we both have found individual reps that we love and enjoy. Um, we usually try to keep our looks somewhat different, but enough to where if we get called into that twin thing, we can pull it off. But um, it, it's interesting. I mean, I wouldn't know any other aspects of being an actor without being a twin, you know, but, yeah. you know, I feel like we've done a really good job of, you know, being very supportive of each other. You know, there's never like any jealousy or resentment towards the other for this booking or that audition. You know, um, we help each other on like almost every single audition. Like uh -huh. nine percent of the time we're self-taping together and like giving notes and helping each other. And I think, you know, Godless is, was the turning point of us as twin actors. Cause that was actually the first time we really acted as twins together. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was like, back like five things back to back after that that we did as twins um yeah. which is amazing you know like we can never complain about that you know it's a yeah. dream come true um but like you know the small caveat to that is at what point do people stop viewing you as individuals right you know and it's not only that but as just twins like because we can look I mean I could send you some pictures we could look like we're 10 years apart like yeah. we could easily play brothers not necessarily twins you know so right. it's it is, it is something to work to get people to see past, um, but I do feel that we do a pretty decent job of that. Yeah, so. I was always so curious about that. I, I think yeah, I think the the most recent twins in my brain are Tia and Tamara Maori, uh, the actresses, and seeing how they, after doing a show, Sister Sister, for so long together, and then watching them blossom and mm -hmm. and seeing oh, I see, you really do see the different personalities and and seeing them in their own shows, and it's like okay, I can see them as individuals. I, I but I imagine, you know, at the end of the day, casting productions do what's convenient for them and what they need. So you know, with that, you know, the the purpose of this podcast too, as you all have been watching, know is. For, we really want to remind you that each and every one of us has something that is magnetic about us, something that when you walk in the room and when you walk on set, there's just something about you. So what does Matthew know for sure? When Matthew steps on a set or do, does a self-tape, what do you know for sure is your unique thing that makes you magnetic that no one has to tell you? It's funny because I never used to see it in myself. Um, and it's something that I've grown to see and love um, is just the charismatic appeal to pull people in. Like I never saw it until I had a lot of people tell me like, no, like you're a friendly face. Like people, they want to talk to you or like they feel drawn like because they feel like they know you. Mm. Um, and, you know, it took me a while to actually see that in myself because it's kind of like a, it's like a small like ego check. Like, is that something right. I'm blowing on myself? Or is that something that, I, you know, you actually, you know, believe and hold within yourself. Um, so I, I do believe it's that. And I think um, one example of that is, you know, Russ and I, we had an amazing time, you know, filming Godless for Netflix, um, the Western. And we developed an amazing, like, friendship with the writer and director, Scott Frank. And, you know, his family came to set and, like, we got along wonderfully with his wife and his daughters. And, you know, I think that goes a long way and that that eventually blossomed into him wanting to work with us again. You know, mm -hmm. and that's how we got called into the Queen's Gambit. You oh, know, because he's awesome. the same writer as director and director. So, you know, I feel like that is an example of how that can work and blossom. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so true. And th there is something, yeah, and you are easy. To, I feel like you are easy to talk to. And, that, and that's, I think the more we understand like the it, the thing that makes you unique, does not have to it doesn't have to be this loud thing like it could be I talked to another actress on this series Charity Jordan and she was like I know I bring the joy I just make people laugh like even it could be the most serious thing and that's but it's those pieces of our of our personality or the quality that we exude our essence our vibe whatever word you want to use I think it's important to tap in and I'm so happy that you like you're sitting in that knowing now because because yeah it's like that's the thing you bring to a 14 hour day mm -hmm. you know it's yeah, just I'm yeah, and I've like I've been on sets where you know someone wasn't having the best day, and I've maybe worked with them like one or two days, and they would like come to seek comfort, like yeah. from me. And it's like I love that. You know, I love being that person for people. Uh, so yeah. 
Oh, that's awesome. I love that. I love love that too. That's awesome. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. I'm going to switch gears a bit. You know, speaking of, you know, being in the industry for a while and you've you've done a lot, what gig did you book that helped prove to yourself, I'm good at this? Like, what gig was that for you? Um, Just because of, like, a technical aspect of it. Um, I always shied away from theater because I wasn't sure if I was capable of doing a whole, you know, hour, hour and a half show, one take. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> right. You know, it's like, that's the self-doubt issue. And that's something you have to work on. Um, but I think a turning point that actually made me believe in myself and capabilities was a, a feature film that my brother and I booked called Burning Shadow. Okay. Um, and it was, it was an indie, like, sci-fi kind of thriller film. But... I had to learn all the lines in less than two weeks <laughs> because it was a very quick, you know, turnaround between being cast in it and the actual filming. Uh-huh. Um, and I shocked myself, like completely was word perfect on every single page. Um, and that's just something like, I was like, I would have never dreamed like five years ago that that was something, you know, I was capable of doing. Yeah. But um, after doing it and pulling it off, I was like, okay, you know, that's, that's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. You know, now you just bring yourself to it, you know, and develop that character. Oh, I love that. That's what I call graduation. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like you, you're you going for this 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 career. You're going, you're going, I can do it, I can do it. And then an opportunity comes. You're like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, two, <laughs> two weeks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And then you do it. And then there is a moment of, and I think it's important, especially those of you watching, if you can relate, you have to give yourself the pat on the back. You have to say, good, I did a good job. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of myself. I handled that. Like, <laughs> okay. Like, thank you more, please. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready for, I'm ready for what's next. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love stories like that. You know, this career, as I know, you know, because you even took a break from it, as you shared earlier, ebbs and flows, ups and downs, <laughs> peaks and valleys. Right. And and I was, I was just talking, I just did another interview with Chelsea Crisp. I hope you guys will watch that episode. And we talked about it. This career just is uncertain. Mm-hmm. It just is uncertain. So how have you dealt? How do you deal with the ebbs and flows when it's you working and then it's super quiet and then, oh, you're so close. And then it goes to someone else. Like how, what are you, how do you really deal and how do you get out of the the disappointment yeah I mean that's definitely been another huge learning experience um in the beginning it's weird in the beginning it wasn't as hard to not get the yeses you know because you were still like you're so fresh and you still had you know I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get it and then I think it becomes harder you know the bigger the pot gets you know yeah. and not necessarily money but just like like what the project is or who it's filming with, you know, and that's where, you know, you mentally get more attached to the yes or the no and how it affects you. Mm -hmm. Um, And losing a pin is the worst feeling (laughs) an actor could have, I think. You've been released. Okay, why are you yelling that? (laughs) (laughs) Just don't tell me. But but yeah, um, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely easy to go into like darker places with that. Like, and that's where you do start second guessing yourself. Like, am I doing the right thing? Should I have done that? Should I have, you know, am I making the right choice to be an actor? Um, But I think that's where the most growth comes from is because you have to pull yourself out of that. And, you know, I was actually thinking about this 
you know, when you had asked me to do the podcast, I was thinking about, you know, the booking magnet and what that means. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking about like how, as most things in the universe, you have to go with the counter of that. And Mm -hmm. so much of it is against your nature, just like, you know, the magnet can either pull it together or can push it apart. And you actually have absolutely no control over that. You know, there's a hundred different things, you know, that could go on behind the scenes that make or break you getting the job, you know, and that could be age, race, look, you know, this producer wants this, but this producer wants that, you know, then the role gets cut completely, you know, or they push it two weeks. And then, you know, now you no longer have availability for that shoot time. Like, and so that's when you just have to learn to let it go. You know, it's completely. What does that look like for you? You get the call or you get the, well, we don't get the call. We get the email that says, They've, they're passing, they're going another direction. Like, what is that process? I, you sit with the feeling, um, do you work out? Do you, for me, y'all, I eat, I'll eat some, I eat some comfort food. I, I, I give myself one comfort meal. I, I, I gotta have one comfort meal to just sit with it. <laughs> I, I do that too. It's usually like a big bowl of ice cream with like chocolate syrup on top. Uh, but actually funny enough, I do turn to fitness and you know, a lot of times I will turn to that poor little heavy bag in the corner of the gym that's now going to get the crap kicked out of it for two hours, <laughs> you know, but, but to me, that's, to me, that's not like out of anger. It's like, out of you know, constructive. Cause I, I get a lot of joy, you know, out of, you know, being physical and working out and training. I love still doing my pad work and, you know, punching and kicking a bag. Like to me, that centers me and brings me back to like a true part of me because um, that was like a big part that I, you know, kind of gave up to be an actor. You know, I could still pursue if I really wanted to, but to what extent? You know, right. you can break a nose. You could, you know. True, true. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. You got to be careful. This is your money maker. Yeah, like you could, you could like break a leg, or you know, you don't. There's just too much risk with it. Um, but so that's, you know, that's why it's good for me to still center myself with that training. You know, because it, it takes me back to that joy in my life. And it reminds me of like a carnal part of myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so, I definitely can say, you know, the way I deal, I don't know. I almost feel, I I was saying this to Chelsea. I I feel like the bigger, like you said, the bigger the role, I feel like the harder to be transparent with you all, the harder, Mm -hmm. the harder it gets. I have more awareness and clearly been in the industry long enough to know I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm not quitting. Right. But, but if, but also like we were, I was in, I keep referencing Chelsea because I just talked to her, but if you need to take a break, if we need to stop, then you can stop. Right. It's, and that's, you have that freedom too. But you know, there's something about when you don't get that co-star, I think I, I would dare say when you're first starting out and you're trying to get your first anything Mm-hmm. That can feel like the hardest booking to get the first co-star, the first guest star. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, I got that one. I, th- I feel like that's the hardest one. So th- that rejection before that is really painful. And then there's everything in the middle. But then when you get that audition for that life changing role, or, mm-hmm. you know, imagine if you and Russ did not book the Queen's Gambit, like you, we saw how big that show got in the attempt. Like, it's just hard. It's just hard to... Mm-hmm. To, to not get it. But I, I would say what I'm hearing also from you is just finding healthy ways to release. Mm-hmm. And and how do you how do you mentally do what tools, tools, books, resources do you use or turn to to remind yourself that you are that you are worthy, that you are good enough, that you can do this? Is that, do you have any resources that you've used over the years? Well, thankfully I have an amazing circle of friends. Um, they're very supportive. Um, like my, my brother, my friends, like we all kind of are collective and like, we're always all there to uplift and motivate. And, you know, I've got people who like work spiritually and universally. And, you know, a lot of that is like stuff that some people think is beyond them, but once you can like connect with that part of yourself, I think that really helps, you know, because you see the bigger picture, you see that everything's not like, okay, this, this audition was life, you know, you you can see past that. Um, And I think that's, you know, really helped me. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Um, And 
feel free y'all borrow whatever you need. That's why I love to ask this question to every guest because you'll find what works for you. And I just, I, I'm so careful and to make sure, I just want to make sure we're just not going into, it's easy to say the what's wrong with me. It's easy to say for that to be the only question that gets asked versus so many others that might be healthier. Before we wrap, I do have one one other question. Um, think I want you to think about, hold space in your mind's eye for visualize the actor who's seasoned, been in the game maybe 15 plus years and they just hit a lull and they're feeling very like, maybe I, I'm i kidding myself. Maybe I should just give up. Nothing's been happening. Then I want you to also think about the brand new actor, you know, trying to get that first, you know, that move, move just move to wherever they move. They're trying to get their breakthrough, but they're feeling like they just keep hitting walls. And so both are asking themselves, am I even good enough? Like what is, maybe I'm kidding myself. Mm. What would you say just to encourage them? I mean, I would, from knowing what I know and what I experience and stuff like that, I would say like, if it's, if, if it was your true passion and what you feel in your heart is what you want to do, then you just keep pursuing it. You know, once you get, once you get past the overthinking of this industry, you do realize that it's, it's a numbers game and it's not, it's not necessarily even about talent, you know, because I mean, there, there's a lot of very successful actors who, you know, there's plenty of people who are better or could have been a better, you know, pick for that role. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about, you know, the numbers, just keeping active. Like, like some people like, they'll be like, oh, well, I didn't really want to do that. So I turned on the audition and I was like, well, was there like a good reason to turn it down? Like, <laughs> were, you, were you double booked? Like, were you sick? Were you going to be out? You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. so if you, if you truly want it, I feel like you don't do that. You know, you don't, you don't pass up the opportunity because you don't know who's watching the tape. You know, you may not, you may not be anywhere near close for that role, but you were called in for it, but that person might remember you, you know, and then they're going to want to bring you in next time, or they start to like you and care for you. And like this person is always on, even though they weren't necessarily the best fit, they gave it everything they could have, you know, and you tell a story. That's how I, that's how I go into kind of every audition is just to tell a story. Yeah. Like whether you're going to book it or not be like, well, this is my performance that I'm going to give to this character. And if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. But at least that was my telling. Yeah. So I just pursue it. Don't give up, you know? Yeah. I mean, there are people who will audition for 15, 20 years before they book something. But you know what? When they book it, that's the best day of their life. <laughs> yes. <know>? So, <laughs> like, finally, it paid yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's so true. You know, I to your point, I just taped something the other day. And I, it came into my inbox and I told my husband, I'm not right for this, mm -hmm. but I'm taping because this, this universe <laughs> for this, for this type of show, they were, they're casting way more things down the road. Mm -hmm. that I think I would be amazing for. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to show up and show them. <laughs> I want to do these lines, right? But I already, because I, I can, and this isn't me just not casting myself. Like I just, I'm good enough at my job to know if it's, if me jumps off of it, if me just not, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, but I'm like, the long game is I'm showing up and I'm going to give you the energy of what the role that I do want, that I know you're working on next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was a strategy I did the other day. But I was like, I'm not going to turn it down. Mm -hmm. they see they, they want to see something they see something in me or they're you know and oftentimes i believe casting they're curious right you know because it's especially if it's something that's open ethnicity or they don't know which way they're going to go with it yet right and they they are could be fans of your work and i want to see what matthew's going to do i want to see what christine is going to do so i t i'm so glad you brought that up not talking yourself out of the game especially if it's something that you say you want because when you are didn't when we're like you said why are you declining exactly like what is that <laughs> to me that's when we're operating in contrast so we say we want something but then when the something shows up there I believe the real reason for those declines is something that's happening in that middle that hasn't been dealt with resistance yeah. and fear around many things. So I love that you brought that up because 
this is, you know, as a casting director once told me Seth Caskey to be exact. He's like, in that moment, when you get the audition, in that moment, the role is yours. Mm -hmm. It's yours. That's and hard. you get to tell this story, yeah. And I love how you said it. Well, they're going to get the Matthew show, so right. that's what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and sometimes, like, you don't know. They could already have two offers out to the people they know they want. But, you know, as a casting office, they need to call people in. So they could be calling in people that they haven't had the opportunity to see, but they want to see, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. you just give every audition what you got. Oh, I love that. You just, I don't know, you just sparked something in me again. Especially, you know, at the time of this recording, we're not going in the office to do theatrical auditions, but I do miss that. I, I would never forget there was an audition, this is a couple, a couple of years ago. Um, I had got, had an appointment. I knew I was planning to go. On, my, on the morning of, my agents reach out and say, hey, casting reached out and said, this offer, the offer went out and closed for this role. And they know that you were coming in to do that. They were like, do you want to go? Mm -hmm. And knowing that the role is already cast. And I said, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, I'll be there. And I, I think there's something even sealed with me and my agent during that moment. Like, oh, wow. Because I could have easily like, no, what's the point? Like, no, the point is this is, they're casting other things. And even for this show, like yeah. there'll be other roles. So. I hope that encourages you at home, you know, don't throw away the opportunity because sometimes you just never know. I, right. I've, I've had I've had way so many testimonies around the same thing you're saying. Yeah, and you've got to show up for yourself and like you put in the work. So why shouldn't you at least be able to show it? Right, so. right. <laughs> you know, this is one of the few industries where we do all the work. We do the entire right. job without guarantee of payment. Right, especially now with soft tapes. <laughs> setting up the lights, setting up this, setting up that. Right. We oh painted a wall, we painted right. a wall just- Did you, to... Oh, so it's not even, so, but you made it easy. You're like, you know what? Just yeah. paint it. Yeah, it goes good with the eyes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Matthew, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Y'all, I'm gonna put links to all, all of Matthew's uh, socials and stuff in the show notes. So don't worry, you can follow and stay connected with Matthew and everything he's gonna be doing. Um, this is so inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story and your journey. I'm so proud of you. And I'm so excited to just keep watching you blossom. It's been lovely. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here with you. I, you know, I appreciate you and I hope we can see each other soon at some events. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Booking Magnet Magic. If you miss any part of this series, you can always tune in. Um, there's so many great interviews here to inspire you to uh, just be your best. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.